Hi guys! Otter Ellie here. Welcome to my Otter Den and let me show you how it's made. As always, let's start with the mood board. So I wanted this sort of basic, hidden, rundown entrance, but Slot Limit wouldn't let me do all of this detail and clutter, so I kept it a little more simple. I wanted it to lead out onto a veranda in the backyard with this rock garden, and also to include some traditional lanterns as well. The main feature of this build, of course, is the otters. And while there are roughly a million waterfalls in this build, I did still have some dyes to use, which include Soot Black, Snow White, I'll Go Brown, Storm Blue, which are used for all of the skies, and Silk Green for the main front room. Let's talk about this front door. So this is really simple, it's made with a Fool's Threshold, and to make a divide between the two, I used a dance pole. The bottom panel of the door is made with a small blackboard, and I also put them on the other side of the room that acts as an open door that leads to the outside. The bottom of these doors, though, have double small blackboards, so it looks finished from both sides. The main walls are made with stage panels. Really simple, but I like the texture on them, and it kind of lends itself to wallpaper like our inspo image. The roof is done with the Hanish, 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 <laughs> and I really love the beams on these, while the ceiling light is just a pendant wall light. The floor is made up of my trusty Hingen bookshelves, and the rest of the floor is made up of this tatami loft. It's raised a little bit off the ground, so you spawn in on top of it as well. Two cushions make some makeshift seating. Uh, and hidden underneath the table here is a message book. And to make it look a little more thematic, there's a Hingen scroll. And I'm not going to be able to grab it, but sitting on top of this Glade sideboard are some Hingen brushes, just to suit the Japanese theme of this room a little bit more. Outside, the main part of the veranda is made with an imitation wooden skylight, which is impossible to see at this angle, but it's there. You know it's there. There's one small step to get in and out, and that's made with the back bar. This has collision to walk on, which is really handy, and the back of them make a really nice fence. The sky is made with white screens. The bamboo trees are made with bamboo planters, while combed wool rugs act as rake sand. I really wanted this to feel like an indoor-outdoor space, so I added this awning above the door made out of layered wooden steps. Flipping around to the cave entrance, there's more greenery with this wall planter. And to get the rock garden look from our inspiration images, I floated up some indoor oriental waterfalls from below. I'm also using these on the other side as well, and they make up the frame or the entrance to this cave too. It wouldn't be an otter den if I didn't have otters with this otter otter lantern. And to finish off the greenery are some more bamboo planters and a wall climbing ivy as you enter the cave. The traditional Toro lantern is really simple and made with a wooden work lantern, while the base is an oasis stool. I have this floated at its minimum height, just so the lantern sits above that rock garden. This stairwell was absolutely a pain in the ass. 
Uh, I'm gonna turn up the lights here just so you can see it a little bit better. I just wanted this really dark hole that kind of transitioned from the top down to the cave. On the top of the stairs and down the exterior wall of the house are stage panels. The ones up top are just placed normally, while the ones that go down the stairs are all storage placed and staggered to fill any gaps. On the other side of the stairwell that shares the common wall with the basement, I didn't want the backs of the stage panels poking through. So on this side, I used white rectangular partitions. And again, you can see that they're storage placed and staggered to cover any gaps. This takes a lot of patience and you will sometimes end up with seams. They're not that offensive to me, so I just let them go if they're kind of small. And once the lights are down, they're really not that visible. Well, actually, except for this one right here. <laughs> Heading down the stairs, we're getting into the area that transitions to the cave. The roof here is made with a flagstone loft, while the rest of the cave ceiling is made with eastern indoor ponds. And this marble alcove bed covers the rest of the beam that transitions into the basement. I wanted this transition from stairs to cave to feel as natural as I could. So in addition to doing the ceiling, I also did this curved path with wooden steps. This was the second biggest pain in the butt to do. Uh, and you can see that each kind of curve is two stairs and I relied pretty heavily on grid snap to do this. Storage placed onto one of the lower stairs is an Eastern indoor pond. And because otters like gold, do they? There's some splendid treasure and a dead man's chest hidden underneath here as well. More otters with this otter otter wall lantern. Kind of looks like it's perched on a rock here. And surrounding basically the entire perimeter of this downstairs are indoor oriental waterfalls. It's not as loud as you think down here. Uh, the sound doesn't really compound like it does with the showers. Behind the waterfall is a verdant petition and a glade lantern to add a little bit of extra ambience. Heading further down the stairs, the walkway continues some more with these wooden steps. While a small bridge is made using two antique wall shelves turned on their sides. More indoor oriental waterfalls cover the rest of the stairway. A stage panel is used here to make it look like the cave entrance to the outdoors, while a Baladian crystal lantern is hung to add a little bit of blue light. Another eastern indoor pond is sitting directly on the floor. And to hide the gap between the two ponds, I used this ivy curtain to blend it together. I added another Toro lantern here with a wooden work lantern. And again, this is sitting on top of an oasis stool. This one's also floated at minimum height, so it's not so deep into the water. To add some more blue light again, I used this mushroom lantern and I really love playing with lighting. You can kind of see how it would look awesome to hide more, but we're working with 200 slots here. So in addition to being full-time otters, sometimes my friends like to visit gambling dens as well. For that reason, I wanted this space to double as an otter den and a gambling den if the occasion arose, which leads me to this little area. This back wall again is more waterfalls, and since we're in the basement and I can't float any of these waterfalls from the floor below, I decided to raise some higher and lower to make the rock pattern look a little bit more organic and not so repetitive. Hiding up on this ledge is some undersea spoils. 
and another order to guard them. There's a bag of booty for all that gambling. Another lantern for some glow. And if you're not sitting on some rocks, then you can also sit on these glade stools. A shipping crate acts as a table here. And hanging from the cave ceiling, some wall climbing ivy to add a little bit more immersion. Swinging around to the last part of the cave here, if the artists get hungry from all that gambling, there's some fish on skewers sitting on top of this wine barrel. And white screens act as the sky peeking through cracks in the cave walls. Even more waterfalls make up the rest of the cave, staggered in the same way the last wall was. And tucked into an otter size opening as some more undersea spoils. And that's it for this build. Not a super technical build, but definitely a challenge balancing 200 slots between two floors. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Thanks again for watching and happy housing.